Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. In today's equipment autopsy, we have an NCAD CADJET 2, which is presumably made by Kodak, perhaps. We don't really know. There's not a lot of labeling on this, but we'll get down to this. This is a really big printer that I have a dream for. See, I want to make a thing. I want to make a thing! I want to make a, uh, a really just awesome inverted pendulum. So before we can really do anything with this, which it is a little ungainly, but come on, the table's designed for a people, so it'll be okay. It can fit a whole people on it. But first we gotta take all this wire off. There. Oh, that's much better. Okay. So what this is is basically a really big printer. And I'll show you guys, for, well here, I'll spin it around for you so you can see it. It's such a dainty, delicate, easy to move operation here. This is an NCAD CADJET 2, serial number is Foxtrot Paul 302. And that's what it looks like inside. It really is just a, a big printer. And given that it's a CAD jet, well, we screwed that up, didn't we? We'll just, we'll just take that right out. Given that it's a CAD jet, I gotta think it's an inkjet printer. It's got two different heads on it. This one is black. This one is tricolor. And I am not suitably motivated to take a part inkjet cartridges for an autopsy, at least not today. That might, might happen at some point in the future, but it's not going to happen today. But I'm thinking it's just a really big inkjet printer. Now this is a wide format, so it'll go like the print area starts at about here and goes all the way to there. It won't let me go any further than that. It's probably not working so well because it had a chunk of metal in it. it. Might have had something to do with it. Now, taking printers apart is its kind of a double-edged sword. Inside printers, you'll almost always find a really good stepper motor, sometimes a few, and lots of rollers and cranks and shafts and stuff like that. The downside is you have to take a printer apart to get them. And aside from that, printers are pretty much junk and you don't really find a whole lot of useful stuff in it. So, I'm the only reason I'm really autopsying this is I want to build an inverted pendulum. And part of building an inverted pendulum is you need a cart, cart on a shaft that you can move very, very accurately, very fast from one end to the other. So this gives me my cart, my shaft, my motor, my drive system, everything I need for that. All the rest of the stuff, don't care about it. So we're just gonna, yeah. We're going for what's good and useful. And all, along the way, we'll, we'll take some parts out and it'll be kind of cool. Now, I've never taken apart a large format printer before, so I don't really have an established plan of attack for this. So we're just gonna examine it a bit. Oh, they don't make it easy. Okay. All right, I'm going to start by just popping all the easy to get to stuff off the back. I need a little pair of pliers for that. So we got a couple big things back here. That was quick. Okay, well, we don't need that. It's gonna... My area is going to fill up with a lot of parts in a hurry. Because a lot of the stuff that comes off of this is going to be rather impressively sized. Let me move that out of the way on that end. And I can get that screw.
Okay. Oh. Got my cup. All right, so that one's out of the way. So we go down to this end, and we'll do this one. Okay. that and then these will come out quick and easy this one's broken so it's either been smacked or tightened way too hard in the past That's, oh, you're messy. Okay. all the way out. The other one is kind of captive. Are there any ways to take these? Uh, not without sliding it off the end. Okay. So we're going to roll that whole thing up like that. And I'm not going to mess with stuff in the middle until I get stuff off of here. So that's these two, which I couldn't see a minute ago. This one in here. Oh, hear that? That's the sound of victory on that end. Okay. All the buttons just are little bell cranks. A bell crank, there's a the thing to look up. Bell crank is a little thing where you want to make something happen around a corner. And these are bell cranks. You can see on this side they just pivot around a little thing, you can see a little pivot in there. And on the front, they just look like buttons. So it's a button that works around a corner. We don't need it. There's a screw tucked down in that hole. And if I'm lucky, when I pop this one off, this whole end will come right off as well. Ha. Oh! Glory and victory! <laughs> All right, now we're down to something we can work with. I can't get these off, and they make it really hard to roll around without taking one of the ends completely off. So let's examine an end. Oh, look, there's lots of screws on the end here. So we'll just take all these screws off, and maybe then I can take the end right off because this is pretty much a big extrusion. An extrusion is a shape made by pushing something through a cutout in the manner of the shape that you want. If you remember, if you've ever played with the Play-Doh Fun Factory, that's an extruder. It's a really good example of how extruders work for people that are just getting into engineering and stuff is Play-Doh Fun Factory. Now imagine if instead of Play-Doh, you actually filled that with aluminum. You can make all kinds of stuff. You'd be amazed how many times in a day you interact with something that is based on an aluminum extrusion. It happens all the time. If you have relatively new windows in your house that are made out of aluminum, 
sometimes even vinyl, that's extruded. Lots of car parts. If you've ever seen one of the old Hayes modems, extruded aluminum, the heat sink in your computer is probably extruded. That might be, a, it's probably copper. If you got a nice computer, it might be, or it probably aluminum. If you got a nice computer, it might be copper. Um, but that's almost always made in the form of an extrusion. That is a bloody big plate. Look at that. That's a quarter inch thick plate. It's serious business. But now that I have that off, oh, I don't know if it'll slide past the switch. Come to me. No! Ah, we have to go off the other end. Okay, fine. Fine. We'll go down here. Now on this end, hey, look at this. We have the brains of it all right there. That's the brains. And you'll notice this brain is missing a chip that could be right here. It's missing two chips that could be here. Now these chips are memory chips. And this could be just about anything. But we'll take it off because we don't need it. We don't care. It's just an IC board, nothing special. It tells us it's kind of old too because it's got a, uh, a big parallel port connector. I have heard those referred to as an LPT1 plug. That's not true. An LPT1 is line printer number one, and it's what some operating systems, primarily Windows, refer to as the parallel port by, because it's the printer port in, in Windows. But it's technically, well, technically it's called a Centronics connection. But it's a parallel port. Oh, there's so much stuff, okay. Now, we'll pop this off. With these ribbon connectors, look here. That's an important thing to know if you're taking stuff apart. See, see this flat ribbon cable that goes in here? There's a little blue thing down here. See that little, how the top is blue and the rest of it's white? If you just pull on this, it'll come out, but it's not gonna be happy about it. To properly remove it, you wanna lift up on the little blue part just a bit. It'll, it'll snap up, okay? And once it comes up, this will pop right out, no problem. If you do it that way, you won't mess up the plug or the cable, and you'll probably be able to plug it back in in the future if you ever want to. Now, here we get a good shot of that. You can see a lot of the different stuff on there. This is a pretty smart printer as printers go. It's kind of cool. There's a lot to it. And it beeps. There's a little beeper right there. It's your piezo speaker. Okay, now we take this end off. We're getting down into the chewy center. It would not surprise me if this whole thing only has one motor. But it's gonna have a big stepper motor. Well, for varying values of big. But it's gonna have a big stepper motor that handles the carriage going from one end to the other. And that's what we're after and we're after the slide and the drive mechanism. And if I'm really lucky, I can do it in such a way where they all come out hooked together and intact. Because the stepper motor can be driven from just a motor driver. We don't need the big circuit board that was on it. Does us no good at all. And stepper motor drivers, really easy to make, really easy to buy. Because pretty much five minutes after somebody buys an Arduino, the first thing they do is they blink LEDs. And the second thing they do, drive stepper motors. So this is well, well trodden territory. Okay, so we got that off. Now we gotta feed the wires through it, of which there are a lot. Now this is stuck on here with a sticker. There, so we can get that off. 
And we just feed those through. And then there's the other big plate. Wow, that is a beefy stepper motor. Okay, now that we have all that off, look at the end and look at that shape. And you'll see what I mean right here. This body is one piece of metal and it's extruded. It's pushed through a die that's shaped like that. And now that you know what to look for with extrusions, you'll see these everywhere. Anytime you see a long piece of metal that has, especially if it has funny little shapes like this, because these are really hard to make any other way, this whole thing here, everything that's brown, is one big extrusion. So it's going to have the exact same profile all the way down. There may be holes in that, but those are secondary processes. They extrude this out, they cut it to length, and then they cut the holes where they want. But now, ah, rage part, cat. Okay. I never liked you. All right, so we've got those out of here. And now we're down to a much more manageable size. And we can really get a look at stuff. This is neat. This is, that is a little bronze bushing designed to ride that rail. So they use bronze because the rail's probably made out of stainless steel. And if you just use stainless steel on stainless steel, it's gonna chew it up. But if you use bronze, because bronze is a lot softer than stainless steel, it can rub against it and it won't mess things up. And it'll last for a really long time. It's why in the Geek Group steam engine kits, all the parts that are stainless steel that have to rub against another part, the other part is bronze. You always use two different metals. You also don't want to use bronze against bronze. Same reason. But bronze against stainless steel, happy, happy, happy. So we don't need this. We don't, we don't need this. We can take all the goopy parts. Well, this is pretty clean, actually, at this point, because we got rid of the really nasty bits. See, anything ink management is going to be nasty. Like, this whole thing down here is going to suck really bad. But, 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 I can take that side out there. You could come out. You know you want to. Get in here with something long and skinny. There we go. You take that. See, look at that. One part, and I got ink on my thumb. Okay. But that should be pretty much the only really nasty bit. Because we got rid of the other stuff. So we're going to keep the carriage on there, but we want to get rid of the wire. Because it doesn't really do us any good. Okay, so we can, we can get rid of that. Now we've just got the carriage, but it's missing its thing, so I gotta push that back in there. And it's only gonna fit in one very spi- Ah, that's it. There's a thing that catches it. Well, that's way better. A lot of friction. And you can see down here, this is a bad design. So HP, Kodak, CADJET, whoever made this, NCAD, you guys, you guys pooch this one good. Look at this. See this tiny little pulley on this belt? That pulley is too small for that belt. This pulley needs to be bigger. Now, by making a bigger pulley, this moves faster. By making a smaller pulley, you're more accurate to where you're putting this. You can tell this is too small for the belt because it, it's the belt naturally comes out a little bit on either side. So you can see the belt isn't really happy with this setup. And you can see how as I move this, see how the belt wobbles in and out? That's, that's not a happy setup. Now it works, and I'm sure it worked for years, but it'd be a lot better if you had a bigger diameter pulley here, even just a little bit. Because you can see how this is all chewed up here. Well, it ate up the belt, trying to spin against it. It's just a friction drive. There's cogs on the outside, but there's no cogs on the inside. So it rubbed against the belt. And that's what all this stuff here, all this black particulate matter, that's actually little tiny pieces of shredded belt that have come off of it. So not very good there. 
I am not pleased. So there's two, there's two bolts right here, right next to the pulley. You see a bolt here? You see a bolt here. These two bolts probably hold the motor onto this plate. And this plate holds the motor and the shaft. So our goal here is to get this assembly off from the rest of it. And to do that relatively intact. So that could be kind of tricky, but we're going to try. I just got to see how much of this we can get rid of. Well, we've got the back here, and that, this is kind of cool. You won't be able to see this, but we're going to try. On the back of this, there's a strip. You can see it right here. This strip is graduated. There are thousands and thousands of little, tiny, thin black lines printed on this. And there will be a reader in this head unit, and it counts the little lines as it moves back and forth so it knows where it is. It's kind of cool. And it's how you give position feedback, and it's something that we're going to want on there if we're using this as an inverted pendulum. So I'm going to take out this screw. I'm going to take out this screw down here. Okay, that, that lets me move a lot all of a sudden. From the bottom. So let's figure this out. I don't think that's a plate that comes off, but I'm going to take these screws out because they might help me later in the game. I think that's just an unpainted section where there was a leg or something. But there's screws on the bottom here. And I'm going to take them out because there's nothing inside that I want there anymore. And the only thing here on the inside should be the power supply. So we're going to take all that out. So what will probably happen is I'll take out a lot of screws on the bottom here and then stuff will just start falling out from the inside. Need a smaller screwdriver, but only slightly. I'm pretty sure the four big screws are just into bosses on the bottom of this that lets you mount the legs under this. I'm, I'm sure it had some manner of stand. Yep, that's power supply. supply how about that okay so that's that well there's a big something in there we'll see what that is in a bit okay now we'll go down to this end I'm gonna need that now we've got what appears to be an air vent I'll try and turn this so you guys can see this looks like an air vent. That's kind of cool. Neat little duct there. Big screw. Don't know what it does. 
but anything inside we want to remove. So these are nice big countersunk screws. Something big in there just moved. Might go thunk in a second. Thunk. Come on out. Nothing there. Okay, so we've got a lot of stuff inside moving around. Ooh! Big foam. Okay. That goes off. And there's a little control pad. Nothing special in there, though there is a crystal for 2.457600 megahertz. Nothing interesting there, though. Long screwdriver. We'll get this out of the way. Now, see, the big thing with printers like this it all boils down to being able to send the carriage from one end to the other with as much precision as possible. Speed is secondary, but not by much, because it turns out people actually care how long it takes for things to print, and they usually want it faster than whatever you're able to give. Now, we saw there was a little air vent on the bottom. And on the top, I see there's a lot of little holes. See all these little holes along here? In the printing industry, it's pretty common for things that have to move paper to use air, especially a slight vacuum, to manipulate that paper. So these are probably little vacuum holes, which means two things, that the air vent on the bottom is an exhaust, and that in between them, there's going to be a little air pump. Oh, you're going to come out? Come on out. It'll be fun. All the cool kids are out here. Come on. There you go. So we've got that long piece that I'm going to set up there because it's kind of sharp. And then we can take out all these little shims and stuff. There's, there's a lot of little pieces here. It looks like it was one of these little shims that it had eaten. Remember back in the beginning when we found that piece of metal in a place it wasn't supposed to be? That might be how this printer died. It ate one of its own parts. Okay. Now I wonder if we tilt it up, if things might fall out. A lot of paper dust. So that's totally disconnected at that end. It's only held at this end. And it can't be too hard to figure out where. I think, I think it's just these three bolts. But I also think if I take those three bolts out, I might separate the rail from the carriage. And I don't really want to do that. That might just be how it goes. And I'll have to figure out how to put it back together later. Okay, yeah, I just separated the rail from the carriage. Uh, 
Oh, 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 oh. Come on out. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. That's our win right there. That's what we wanted. And all the rest of this is just crap. Ugh. It's just a big, heavy extrusion. But this is the part we wanted because now we've got our motor, we've got our head, and the motor isn't even a stepper motor. It's just a little DC motor. 0 0.5 No way. There's no way it's that easy. Is it really that easy? Huh. The motor is just a little DC motor. Because there's only two wires. If it was three, it's a servo motor. And with four, maybe three, it could be a stepper motor. But with two, it's just a little DC motor. I wasn't expecting that. Well, let's see if we can make it move. We gotta try this out. We gotta, we gotta do some stuff here. All right, I got my leads. I got my clippers. Let's cut the end off of this. These are not what I want to use to strip this little wire, but it'll work for now. All right, we'll clip a power feed on here. I don't know how well this is going to work because we don't have any kind of alignment or anything and it's really all jumbled about. Let's see if we can get power on. Do I want that one? Yeah. Okay, I got power. We'll take five volts and see if that does anything. That does it. Okay, let's take our voltage up. I'll reverse it and it should go the other way. Boom. How cool is that? Now we'll turn the voltage all the way down. We'll lock this on here, we'll lock this on here. And now, let's see how little voltage we can. That's two, three, four, about four. That's really nifty, isn't it? You control the speed with simple voltage, you control the direction with polarity. This is neat. We got a little motor on a trolley. It's way too slow for a uh, inverted pendulum. But it might work for something. I don't know. It's too cool to throw away. So we've got that. So that's our end result. We've got our trolley on a slider with nice good bearings and a little cart and all that and a motor. I think we might be able to swap the motor out for something a little bit beefier and upgrade this a fair bit. But we got the part we wanted and we got to learn a couple things along the way. That's kind of the whole point. So if you're into taking things apart to build cool stuff, you might want to check out thegeekgroup.org because there's a couple thousand guys like you and I that like to hang out and do stuff like this. And if you're still watching this video, you're a geek. It's time to just accept that fact. So check us out at thegeekgroup.org. And until next time, I'm Chris Bowden, and you guys keep exploring. We'll see you around. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation.
This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.